This is guts module number two, are amino acids. It's going to be all on amino acids. The learning objectives, you should be able to list the 20 amino acids and be able to recognize the structure of each. Describe the hydrog hydrogen bonding, ionic bonding, and hydrophobic interactions between amino acids. The, twin amino, the amino acids are alpha amino, alpha carboxylic acids. That means they have a central alpha carbon, they have an alpha amino, an alpha carboxylic acid here, group there. There are 20 amino acids acids coded by the DNA. All life forms use the same 20 amino acids from deadly viruses to all sorts of stuff. Others via post-translational modification sometimes will modify the R group to get a different, slightly different chemical function there. Why learn the structures of the amino acids? One amino acid difference in proteins such as hemoglobin and collagen can result in disease. We'll talk about that later. Amino acid side chain structures dictate protein structure and function. <coughs> Amino acid properties change with pH, so charge on a histidine at pH 6.5 versus 7.5 is important. Different amino acids stabilize protein structure via different types of chemical bonds. The amino acids in the human body are all L amino acids, and so we'll, uh, we'll talk about the how I'll have the L chirality. Uh, so they're L instead of D amino acids. There's some D amino acids in the, in the uh, cell wall of bacteria. The uh, protein folding and amino acid abbreviations. So here are the amino acid abbreviations. Here's a three-letter abbreviation and a one-letter abbreviation. Uh, you don't have to learn these, but you will as time goes on see them. So I want you to be able to refer back to them if you need to, and you'll learn them the more you use them. Uh, the nonpolar amino acids <clears throat> are in yellow here and they tend to be clustered together on the inside of proteins. They also are in the part that trans, uh, where a protein is a transmembrane protein, expanding uh, it tends to form a helical structure through the membrane and have a lot of hydrophobic amino acids or nonpolar amino acids in that sequence. The amino acids are grouped here as aliphatic ones. Here's glycine, the simplest one, just a hydrogen. Then alanine, just a methyl group. Valine, just three carbons. Leucine, four carbons, still a branch. Isoleucine, a slightly different branch from leucine. That carbon there is branched over here. The, the PKAs are the carboxyl groups of four. And the amino groups, the alpha amino group, is usually referred to as eight. That's not the exact ones for each of these amino acids, but it's close enough to, to understand their charge at various physiological pH. The hydroxyl amino acids are serine. There's just alanine with a hydroxyl group on it. And threonine is a branch chain one. It's very much like valine, except it has a hydroxyl group instead of another methyl group here. The basic amino acids are lysine, K, and it has a side chain. It has four carbon side chain with an amino group out here that has a pKa of 10.5. So it usually has a, char a positive charge at physiological pH. Arginine is the most uh, basic amino acid, and it has this guanidinium group out here, and it has a pKa of 12, so it's going to have a very positive charge out here at any time at physiological pH. Histidine's a little in between. It has 6,5 as this pKa for this group here, so it can, above Above, uh, below 6.5, it's going to have a proton on here and a positive charge. Above 6.5, it's not going to, going to be uncharged. But sometimes, the, due to the envir physiological environment inside a protein, it could, it could carry that protein even up as high as pH uh, 7.5. Amid amino acids. Uh, acidic amino acids and amide amino acids are grouped together. Aspartic acid is D, and it has it's just alanine with an extra carboxyl group on here. pKa of 4 for that carboxyl group, just like this one over here. Asparagine is an amide version of that. has no charge, but is very uh, hydrophilic in that it has a uh, possible pot partial negative charge on the oxygen, partial positive charge on the nitrogen. Glutamic acid, just two carbons and a carboxyl group. Again, pKa of four. And glutamine is the same, only it's an amide version of gl a glutamic acid. Again, a little bit longer, still uh, very hydro uh, hydrophilic out here, can hydrogen bond with that oxygen and that nitrogen, uh, but no charge. 
aromatic, we have phenylalanine, which is just alanine with a, with a benzene ring stuck on it, a phenyl group out here. We have tyrosine is the same. Phenylalanine is actually metabolically converted to tyrosine, put a hydroxyl group on here, out here. This is a phenolic hydroxyl group, so this will ionize, and that has a pKa of 10. And then we have tryptophan, which is a uh, two-ring structure, uh, a benzene ring, and a five-membered ring with a nitrogen in it stuck onto alanine again, just like phenylalanine. And these are all <coughs> the, the aromatics. They absorb light in the UV region. Trypt this is a, notice that this is a log phase, so tryptophan is the most, most absorbing amino acid in the UV at around 280 nanometers, accounts for most of that. And that's one of the reasons you see a protein spectra of having a 280 absorbance. Typical pKa values for the amino acids are 4 for aspartic, glutamic, and carboxyls. Alpha aminos, 8. Sulfhydryl is 8,5. Imidazole is 6,5. Phenolic OH is 10. Epsilon amino group of lysine is 10,5. And guanidinium of arginine is 12, as we've discussed before. You don't have to remember these, but I think you should know approximately what they are. So these, these are very positively charged at physiological pH. These will be negatively charged at um, physiological pH, as will uh, this one will be part in between. These will be in between, depending on what the pH is. Sulfhydryl uh, groups can form disulfides. Uh, so you have, uh, this is cysteine with, with a sulfur group in it, and a disulfide is cysteine. Methionine has a sulfur in it as well, and it is, uh, so it has a, uh, this one. And proline is the only uh, amino acid. It's a, it's a secondary amine. It has a nitrogen in the five-membered ring with a carboxyl. So here's the alpha carbon right there. Here's the carboxyl group, and here's the amino group that's connected to that. So it's, an, it's still an alpha amino, alpha carboxylic acid, even though it has this five-membered ring. Now, amino acid properties, hydrophobic amino acids, phenylalanine, leucine, isoleucine, tyrosine, tryptophan, valine, methionine, and proline. Hydrophilic amino acids are cysteine, threonine, serine, glutamine, and asparagine. Very hydrophilic amino acids, as the charged ones are glutamic acid, aspartic acid, lysine with a positive charge, arginine with a positive charge, and histidine with a positive charge. All right. Uh, now, these amino acids can go to form uh, ionic uh, uh, hydrogen bonding in, inside protein. So you've got a protein and you have hydrogen bonding. You have an ionic bonding, which we also call as a salt bridge. We have hydrophobic interactions. So these are leucines and valines coming together. And we also have uh, van der Waals forces, attraction of electrons of one atom with the uh, nucleus of another. And then we have an ionic bond or another salt bridge down here. This is a, a aspartic acid with an epsilon amino of lysine there. And we also have hydrogen bonding here with a tyrosine OH, hydrogen bonding to a carboxyl group. We can have post-translational modifications. Uh, here is glutamic acid with an extra carboxyl group on it. This is called gamma carboxyglutamic acid. And this is very important for the structure of prothrombin and vital for blood coagulation. And vitamin K is required to put that carboxyl group. We'll talk more about that. 5-hydroxylysine. Here is a, here is a lyse, lysine side chain with a hydroxyl group on it. You see that in collagen. And that's where uh, carbohydrate gets stuck on the collagen molecules. Very important post-translational modification of collagen. Phosphorylase A is uh, phosphoserine here, O-phosphoserine. It's a metabolic regulation in cancer and kinases, so that's important too. You'll hear more about that as the semester goes on. Phosphoserine here, phosphotyrosine here, phosphothreonine here. So we kinases add phosphates, phosphatases remove phosphates. So phosphate, kinases put phosphates on, phosphatases, take them off. Post-translational modifications of, you can have glucose for glycoproteins, like a lot of the glycoproteins in blood plasma, and have asparagine-linked sugars, and they'll have glucose, mannose, et cetera, and linked on to the nitrogen of asparagine. You can have a hydroxyl group on proline. That's also an important structure in collagen, just like the hydroxyl group in uh, 
and on lysine, and this is this is, requires vitamin C. And then we have limited proteolysis. This is another way of mon cleaving peptide bonds, uh, adding water across those bonds. This is this activates the blood clotting cask. Uh, uh, cascade, so it's another important change. We have post-translational modifications of histones. Uh, some histones are very rich in lysine. If you isolate that histone, you change that positive charge to a, uh, to a non-positive charge. That changes its binding to DNA, and that can be very influential. We'll talk more about that. Others will talk more about that later. Other amino acids and metabolism. Arginine is converted to ornithine by the enzyme arginase that's found in the liver, and that releases urea, which is the way we secrete nitrogen from our bodies. Um, other post-translational modifications, I think we've uh, already talked about these, all right? Th uh, thyroxin uh, has uh, tyrosine with an extra tyrosine added to it here, and then it's hot, then those tyrosine rings are iodinated. With This is tetrahyodotyrosine, and uh, so the amino acid summary, learn the structures of the amino acids, be able to recognize the structures, know their approximate charge at physiological pH. Drawing them out as you try to learn them will help you a lot. There's something about writing that these things out that helps a lot. A one amino difference can result in disease. Post-translational modifications change structure and function. And this is the view of uh, from the top of Roan Mountain on a very nice day. Roan Mountain Bald is a great place to climb. Here is the Appalachian Trail running right across the top. And it's 5,800 feet, just a little over a mile high. And the views are spectacular. Thank you. And take